it's much easier to be creative when you have right tools. And today we are going to see if this Atomstack X24 Pro is the right tool to unleash your creativity, even for a noob like me. First, let's start with one information and also a couple of warnings. This device, Atomstack X24 Pro, was sent to me free of charge, to do a test and review video if I like it. No money was exchanged for this device, but more importantly, let's talk about safety. Always wear protection gear when around equipment like this. Glasses are included in the kit. If they are included, they should be used. Also, always operate laser in well-ventilated place or room. I've been operating it outside on the balcony and I and the balcony and all of my neighbor's flats were filled with smoke. Especially take care if you are using it in a closed space. There is enclosure for it that you can buy separately for this device and then you can hook it up to some kind of ventilation to vent everything outside. Now let's talk lasers. Mr. Evil had it, Death Star had it, and if you want to have one, this may be the right tool for you. If you are considering to get the laser, but are also put off by the complexity, don't be. In this case, device is almost 100% assembled out of the box. There are really only few screws to install, and you'll be ready at least the laser part to start your smoke machine in around 5 minutes. And I do mean 5 minutes, everything you need to get started is in the box except any test materials. Some manufacturers do provide them, others don't. But as they also can't guess what you're interested in, it may be for the better, as it may impact overall price and of course the weight of the package. Laser is made out of one single piece of metal frame. It is very stable. It has very low profile, which is a plus but also a negative side. We'll talk about that later down in the video. While we are already talking about negative sides, I must say that all of them can actually be fixed. If you throw a bit more money on this device, as there are a lot of upgrades and improvement as options for this device, but not only for this one here. That way you can start slow in terms of the money and build on top of it as you go. Engraving speeds can go up to 36,000 mm per minute. Coming from a 3D printing world, we usually talk in millimeters per second, so that translates to 600 millimeters per second. Work area or size of the material that you can put inside the laser engraver is 365 millimeters by 305 millimeters. By no means this is the biggest laser I've seen or tested, but it really is enough for most of the home users. One of the nice features that X24 Pro has is a built-in cross laser. But the negative side is that manual and I did only browse through it, doesn't mention setting off offset in a software and also doesn't mention what offset it is, so you have to calculate it or measure it yourself. The process is really simple. You create one simple dot, burn that dot and then compare the distance between the marker and the burn dot. Setting it up in a light burn is also very easy, you have to go to the device settings menu and there just specify the offset numbers. Although you can use the laser just perfectly without the offset setting, I do recommend because it will help you when you frame the items that you want to engrave or cut. It will make your life so much easier. Let's talk about my testing. I did test it with a couple of things and we will look at each of those in a bit. But I didn't manage to do testing of two materials. And unfortunately, well... I did order stainless steel, so I can test the color engraving, which this machine can also do. Color is actually done with the difference between the speed and the power of engraving on the stainless steel. Where it burns, it creates marks in different colors. So that way you can create colorful images on the stainless steel. I did order it out of Amazon, I did pay extra to get them shipped it quickly, and I somewhere misplaced them. I know that after I release this video, I will probably find them here sitting on my desk. Yeah, because of that, I wasn't able to test that color functionality of this laser engraver. The second issue was something I'm not sure why I couldn't get my hands on here on the local market, and that is acrylic. 
this machine can also cut and engrave acrylic. But unfortunately, it looks like it's easier for me to source locally nuclear waste than buying a simple acrylic. Okay, now let's talk about software or controlling or the best part of the device itself. As you've seen, the device doesn't have the LCD screen, so there is no local control on the device itself. But you still have two options. And I really do miss the third option. But again, you have option to upgrade and buy additional screen for it, touch screen, where you can do that third option from there. First option that I tested was a USB connection. I hooked up the machine directly to my Surface Pro. Installed on Surface Pro was Lightburn software. This is the commercial software and I did buy the license. You have a 30 day free trial, but after that you need to buy a license. And it worked perfectly out of box. There are settings that you need to set in the software, but that's a really simple process with only three, four steps. And in the documentation from the X24 Pro, there are settings that you can use and copy from there. The other option in terms of software that you can use is Laser GRBL, a Gerbil. This is the freemium software or open source free software that is alternative to Lightburn. But it misses some of the functionality, so no matter how much I love and would prefer to use open source, I ended up using the commercial software there. But in both cases, you can connect your PC, notebook or whatever directly via the USB cable to the laser engraver. The second option you have is the mobile app. You can download it from the store, connect to the access point of the device itself, and then use that mobile app to print local files. Actually, these are not local files in terms of phone, these are local engraver files. What you would do is, for example, you would do everything in the software, transfer the code to the USB stick, stick that USB stick inside the device, and then control engraving process directly from your mobile app or mobile phone. But also in mobile phone, you have option to use camera, take photo and engrave it directly from the mobile app, use gallery functionality to find image and then burn that image or engrave that image directly from your mobile phone. But there is a very simple editor that you can also use to create something. That's probably the tool good enough for me. And then use that mobile app to once again burn or cut and engrave that image that you've just created on the device itself. Now for the testing. Unfortunately, this laser requires you to have a tool to calibrate the head. That means the distance between the head and the material that you want to cut or engrave. There are two positions that you need to use. One is for the cutting and the other one is for engraving. I was actually using for cutting and engraving projects the same height that would be used for the cutting. That may not be the best for your projects, but it worked well for me. First thing I always do with any laser is to test materials. And this is something that you should always start with. If you change the type of material, for example, from paper to wood, then also change the color, for example, using one type of wood against the other type of wood. And especially if you change the thickness, you should always do material calibration to see what speed and what power level is needed to cut through the material itself. There is a big difference between cutting one and a half or two centimeters thick wood and for example cutting 250 gram paper. What you can do on one speed and one power with one material you definitely do not want to do or repeat with the paper because you will be creating a flamethrower. Atomstack has prepared a document for you and I will be linking it down in the video description that tells you the parameters, some rough estimates for engraving but also cutting. For example pine line interval is 0.1, the speed is 15,000 millimeters per minute, power maximum is 80%, image mode should be threshold, needs to be blackened, no. For example, transparent materials such as acrylic, transparent acrylic would require you to blacken the material so it can cut through. And then it also tells you number of passes. This goes for both engraving, but as I mentioned, there is also information on cutting. And this one did help me a bit as a guideline of what I need to try and test and see against my material. First material that I tried was 250 gram paper. Great for doing, for example, cards, tags, custom boxes and more. I did material testing. I also did line interval testing here. Plus, I did also test print of this call to action task saying, please subscribe. I did my part. Now you do your subscribing part. Then I changed material to the wood. Again, first thing I did was 
material testing for cutting, then decided to engrave earrings from wood to my daughter, just for fun. They didn't end up looking nice, but since I didn't have air assist or air pump with it, cuts were not as clean as they would normally be. And also wood was too thick for earrings, but as experiment, I count this a success. As this was also the time of the Home Assistant Beta 2024.3 release, I tested it against the logo. I engraved the logo in the wood. And it really, really looks awesome. The camera simply cannot show the details, the depths of the wood where it was engraved. Different wood, again, required material testing. And also this beautiful Home Assistant logo. It really turned out perfect. For example, you can use this device to create custom GIFs, cutting boards with your family name, family logo, emblem or whatever. Now was the time to test something difficult. And this was this photo here. You may have seen it on a Twitter about 2-3 weeks ago while I was in London. Well, it did turn out ok, but I could have used different settings for engraving, maybe a bit more speed or a bit less power. And of course, smoke without air pump also darkened everything a bit. But again, the details are very, very nice. You can feel under the fingers the railings that is engraved or carved out of the wood in this picture here. Now these aluminium business cards. This is actually something that will be personalized for YouTube channel members as a small token of gratitude for all of their support. The design that you see here is not final, but I've been testing the cards, the material, and they are just too thin. I've already ordered others that are more than double in thickness, also, instead of aluminium, now I will be using stainless steel, brushed stainless steel, and they will look so good. If not, I'll search for something else that's even better. Maybe gold, who knows, because all my YouTube channel members really deserve it. Now comes the fun part of playing with cork for the first time. Unfortunately, I'm type of the person who likes to jump first, then read the parachute manual on my way down. I decided to engrave and cut with some random settings and really burned everything while cutting the core coasters. But after two additional changes, I got it perfect. This time it was 1600 mm per minute with 80% of power. And it cleanly cut through the core. Coasters really look awesome. Left one is washed as I've unfortunately left finger marks because of all the charcoal that was under it. Yeah, from that unsuccessful testing. If you are enthusiast about RC models, gliders, planes, sailboats, whatever is made out of wood, then this device is perfect for you. I've tried three different thicknesses and all of them came out really, really nice. For thickest, I've just bumped up the speed and used two passes instead of one pass. Really clean cuts, again, on all three types of balsa wood. And the last thing I did was this cock with the Easter Bunny for my daughter. Again, very, very clean cuts and I will definitely be making a sign for someone because this one really came out pretty well. By the way, all the links to all the models I featured in this video will be down in the video description. Most of them were from Creative Factory, cogs, bunny, earrings, etc. But also I will be including a link to the site where I got free planes for these aircraft parts. My cards were created in Canva because this is a tool that I use for other tasks too and I exported it in the SVG format that opens really nicely inside Lightburn as a vector so you can still play and work with that file inside the Lightburn. Let's quickly look at positive and negative sides of this laser engraver. Positive sides are very easy and fast setup, really no skills are needed. With marker it is very easy to position the laser itself. The device is very low profile, so you will have no issues that you accidentally tilt the device. And this is a very fast device for budget laser engravers. For the negative side, very low profile. Unfortunately, because of this very low profile, if you want to cut or engrave on a large piece of wood or any material that you want to work on, well, it will simply not fit inside device. And because it doesn't have legs, you cannot just put part of it under the laser engraver. There is a workaround for that, but it's sold separately. These are the additional legs for the device. And if you plan to do oversized item engraving, I recommend that you get those legs. Air assist or air pump is not included with the device. 
this is yeah something that puts a bit of extra cost on the device but as most manufacturers sell aquarium type air pumps i really do believe they should have included the air pump with the device itself there is of course again a workaround for you to buy from the same shop air pump that will work nicely with this laser and the third one is the z offset or manual calibration of the distance between the laser head and the material that you want to engrave or cut while it's very easy to use the provided tool this tool will probably get lost after a couple of months or years of usage some other devices have internal built-in tool or leg that you either push or extend that you can then use to calibrate the distance between the laser and the material that you want to cut or engrave all those negative sides are really not that terrible and they can be fixed if you just throw a bit of money on this device in terms of upgrades you also have a lot of options here and I really do recommend that you get some of them. I've listed them here in order of priority. First thing you should definitely buy is air assist or air pump. Air pump not just makes cleaner cuts, it also extends the life of the laser diode itself, but it also can reduce power needed to cut the wood or other materials because smoke is pulled away or pushed away from the laser beam and it makes it easier for the laser to go more in-depth, making cleaner cuts and also better cuts in higher speeds and lower power. Honeycomb is something that you also need to consider and I would put it in the second place of most recommended upgrades because Honeycomb will help you, first of all, not damage the desk or whatever you have under the laser. Protecting your desk is one priority, but it will also make much nicer cuts. Control terminal would be my third suggestion. It allows you to use the device without PC or without mobile phone. You copy the files to USB stick, stick it inside the laser cutter engraver, and then via the touchscreen control everything directly on the device itself. I've already mentioned the legs for the larger materials, and I also mentioned the enclosure. If you want to extend the functionality of this laser engraver, you have one additional add-on option. That one is called Rotary Roller. It allows you, for example, to engrave on uh, stainless steel bottles or things that are round, for example, baseball bats. And you can engrave the logos, make them a gift, etc., which you would normally not be able to do on the X, Y axis only. My final thoughts. If you are looking for a simple, fast, reliable, and easy to get started device, you should consider Atomstack x24 pro they also make other laser devices so check them out all in the link in the description while it does have some negative sides i still feel that overall it's very good experience even for noobs like me in laser engraver world so go check out the link in the description and i really do hope that some of you will find their future hobby in this device and who knows maybe even open their own etsy shop if you do open an etsy shop Leave the link in the video description because I really would like to visit that one. I hope that you did like this video and if you did like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you have any kind of a comment, question about this device or if you already have device, either this one or similar device, leave a comment down in a comment section below. And while you are giving this video a like or leaving a comment, check out that you are already subscribed. If not, please hit the subscribe button so yeah, my channel can grow and I can reach 1 million subscribers in next couple of weeks. And before I end up the video, I must thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, shared, subscribed and also commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month, or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least is super thanks, and if you do send a super thanks, I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.